So someone wanted to know about MOGAD, which is myelin oligodendrocytic glycoprotein associated disease, MOGAD. And the disease that we're worried about is optic neuritis. So it can mimic optic neuritis. So the, ma the main thing you gotta recognize first is the most common cause of optic neuritis is either idiopathic or demyelinating from multiple sclerosis. So you need to know what that looks like first before you can start thinking about what MOG looks like. So a typical optic neuritis from multiple sclerosis is unilateral. There's pain with eye movement and you're gonna have an ipsilateral relative afferent pupillary defect, a visual field or visual acuity loss, and the fundus is usually normal. The doctor sees nothing and the patient sees nothing. There's nothing to see because this is a retrobulbar optic neuropathy. And the MRI scan is gonna show enhancement of the optic nerve, usually a short segment in the orbit. And the MS lesions will be seen on the brain MRI, which are T2 flare or hyper intense signal intensity, periventricular, ovoid, super tentorial and infratentorial with or without enhancement and those are going to be the dissemination in time and space radiographically that will make the McDonald criteria for multiple sclerosis. So that is what typical demyelinating optic neuritis looks like. We would not order the MOG or the NMO in this patient right here. They have MS. They need lumbar puncture, frolicoclonal bands, MRI of the cervical spine, neurology, and consideration for intravenous steroids in the acute phase followed by disease modifying therapy for multiple sclerosis. However, if it doesn't look like this, then we should think about MOG. So instead of unilateral, bilateral, instead of RAPD, no RAPD, because it's actually bilateral, and so the R get canceled out relative to the other eye. Fundus shows disc edema rather than a normal fundus. The doctor sees something, disc edema, and the MRI scan does not show multiple sclerosis white matter lesions and instead shows other findings. And the things we're looking for are fluffy lesions that are large and confluent either in the brain or in the nerve itself. Far along the optic nerve that's longitudinally extensive defined as greater than one half of the distance of the optic nerve or longitudinally extensive transverse myelitis, three vertebral segments or longitudinally extensive atrophy of the spine. Those are far lesions and if we see it involving the fat, that's also a, sim, uh, a sign that the inflammatory process is not in the myelin itself, but outside the myelin as well. And so in the MRI scan, we might see sheath enhancement or we might see fat involvement on the MRI scan. So both optic perineuritis in the sheath or involvement on the fat, on the fat suppressed orbital post contrast T1 MR of the orbit and so if we see these funny coarse, fluffy lesion far down the spine or far along the optic nerve or into or involving the fat itself or the sheath, that is when you should be thinking about MOG in patients with optic neuritis.